वेलकम टू शांति पीस फॉर मैथमेटिक्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस एंड डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन फॉर वाइब्रेटिंग स्ट्री एंड हाउ वी कैन मॉडल अ डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन फॉर वाइब्रेटिंग स्ट्री सो लेट अस कंसीडर a y is equal to y of xt be the transverse of displacement of a mean position that means of x axis of a string at time t and at point x so this is the a small portion of a string is demonstrated here this is the point x and at the time t the position if you want to calculate then it is represented as y of xt now let us consider a small portion of a string as a delta s so the delta s is a small portion between the point p and a point q where this q is this point and which is nothing but the x plus delta x which represent x plus delta x and the force acting on a part of a string are tension at p and q that we have to have so there is a tension at the point p is given and tension at point p is also there we are neglecting a weight of a string here so we are assuming that there is no weight is applicable on a string now we just observe that if i can consider this is my line and if i consider this is the t1 and this tension is t2 if i want to calculate what will be the tension in a x direction and if i consider this angle is xi1 and this angle is xi2 so we'll assume that in x direction that is in this direction a tension or in x direction there is no displacement is there so that is t here and here is also this is our t and we need to calculate what will be the situation we got here so i can say the equation of the motion the equation of motion in x direction assuming no displacement in x direction so we are assuming that there is no displacement in x direction is appear then if i use the formula of cos so as in this triangle we can see this in this triangle this is 90 degree so if i apply the cos that is cos xi1 is adjacent upon hypothesis so cos xi1 is adjacent upon hypothesis hypothesis is t1 and adjacent is t so as i if i apply this formula that is cos xi1 will gives me t upon t1 so therefore this t value of t is t1 into cos xi1 and in the similar manner we have assumed that there is no motion in the x or there is no displacement in x direction so that's why this is also same value t and here is also if i apply the same formula that is cos xi2 is adjacent upon hypotenuse so this is my 90 degree here so this is adjacent is t upon t2 so here also we have cos xi2 equal to t upon t2 so that four we have t equal to t2 into cos xi2 so finally what we have equation of the motion in x direction is t equal to t1 cos xi1 equal to t2 cos xi2 because this two values are same as t now let us calculate the equation of motion in y direction so for that so now the equation of motion in y direction that we can say it is a force f is equal to force at q minus force at t but force at q that is at this point so i need to calculate now in that way this is fq and this is my fp that we need to calculate here i should apply the sine formula that is sine xi2 it is opposite upon hypotenuse the hypotenuse is t2 so that's why using the sine formula we can have 
sin xi2 it is opposite upon hypotenuse but opposite side is we have it is you see that opposite will be f this fq upon hypotenuse is t2 so that means fq is t2 into sin xi2 so we'll have f2 fq that is f at q the force at q vertical force at q will be t2 sin xi2 minus in the same way sin xi1 here it is also opposite upon hypotenuse opposite here in this at the point p opposite is fp that is force at p vertical force at p upon t1 which is hypotenuse so that's why it is fp upon t1 so that for the value of fp is t1 sin xi1 so this is t1 sin xi1 and using this formula 1 or equation 1 i can obtain the value of t1 the value of t1 is t upon cos xi1 and value of t2 will be t upon cos xi2 if i can apply this two value into this equation that is the value of t2 and t1 will have t into sin xi2 upon cos xi2 minus t into sin xi here it is 1 so sin xi1 upon cos xi1 is equal to t tan xi2 minus t tan xi1 if i can take common t that is tan xi2 minus tan xi1 so this is the a force we can have now what is tan at point p so that you can just observe that tan is nothing but the tangent at the point p and the tangent we can denoted as a derivative at that point with respect to x but here your y is a function of x and p so that's why instead of taking the total derivative that is dy by dx i will use the del y by del x because y is a function of x and p both so at this point this is the tangent so if you want to calculate tan theta we know that it is dy by dt so this tan xi2 it at point q it will be del y by del x at point q and tan xi1 is del y by del x at point p so that will write here that is tan xi1 is equal to del y by del x at point p this is actually the tangent at the point p we can say and tan xi2 is del y by del x point at point p at point q now you recall one of the formula from taylor series or i can say the approximation of the function which tells you that y x plus delta x is is approximately y at x plus delta x into y dash at x so this is the approximation of x y plus delta x so that is exactly the point dy by dx at point q is there so here it is instead of y we have del y by del x so instead of y we have del y by del x so and you just observe that here it is a point p and point point p is x and point q is x plus delta x so it is exactly the situation is given del y by del x at point q which is at x plus delta x so as for this one we can have this will is del y by del x at point p you just observe that instead of y we have del y by del x so that is exactly we have got that is y at x plus delta x into y dash but y dash is del y by del x so it's derivative of that so that's well it will gives me del square y by del x square at point p so this is the things we got the value of tan xi2 where this is indicate the evolution at the point p and at the point q where this bracket at point p 
and a bracket at point Q indicate the evolution at point P and Q. Now we are applying the Newton's second law. By a Newton's second law, it says that F is equal to MA. So that is MA equal to F. But this mass is nothing but the density into volume. So instead of mass, I'll just use the term as density into volume. Where density, I will write it as rho. And the volume is nothing but the volume of that portion of a string that I will denote it as delta s. And a is the acceleration that we know it is a del square y by del t square. That is the d square y by dt. But the y is a function of x and t. So that's why I'm using the del square y by del t square. So this is del square y by del t square. This is my value of a. And the force that we have obtained in the previously, that is here, the vertical force that we have calculated that is t into tan xi2 minus tan xi1. So by second Newton's second law, we can have these things we have here. Now, what is the value of tan xi2 we have calculated from here? We have it is t into del y by del x at point p plus delta x into del y square by del x square at point p minus tan xi1 the value of tan xi1 we have calculated as del y by del x at point p so it is minus del y by del x at point p and then you just observe that this del y by del x at point p is cancelled out so finally what is you get it is rho into delta s square y by dt square is equal to, now I will not write down at point P because everything is happening at point P. So it is del square y by del x square you can say. Now this quantity entire thing I can just write down as rho. Here it is T is forgot because this T is already there. So this is we got rho into del square y by del t square is equal to t into del square y by del x square. This is 1 upon ds upon dx. So what I take is I have divided by delta x both side and then dividing by delta x will have this. Now applying a limit delta x tends to 0. This quantity that is nothing but the limit of delta s upon delta x as delta x tends to 0 will give me ds by dx. So that's why this will give me rho into del square y by del t square is equal to t into del square y by del x square 1 upon ds by dx. But dx by ds is the value which is a derivative of arc length upon x with respect to x will gives me that is rho del square y by del t square is equal to t del square y by del x square into 1 upon square root of 1 plus del, del y by del x whole square and if I am considering this del y by del x is very very small than 1. That means what we are assuming is if the slope is small everywhere, very small slope will be there. D del y by del x is very small. That means that a slope is very small. That means we can neglect this term. This is tends to 0. So finally what we have it is del square y by del t square is equal to 1 upon c square del square y by del x square where the value of c square I can say it is rho upon t and this equation that we achieved here this is this is called a linear one dimension wave equation and this is a modeling of one dimensional wave equation.
that's it for this video if you like this video please press the like button if you have any comment suggestion or a question please drop down in a comment box below see you in next video till then bye bye sarnam